Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be doing another player review. We've gone from the best player on the San Jose Sharks to the players who were still very good seasons, now down to the players who have been slightly better than what were necessarily expected, and one of those players is, of course, forward John Leonard. He was a sixth round pick just a few years ago in the 2018 entry draft, but in the previous year at his college, he actually did exceptionally well, which, you know, uh, gave some Sharks fans hope that he could crack the NHL roster in the following season, which was, of course, this year. And that's exactly what happened. After a very solid training camp for John Leonard, he actually found himself on the second line with Evander Kane and Tomas Hurdle to start the season. And in that first, very first game of his career against the Arizona Coyotes, he would actually put up two assists in a Sharks victory. Now, they weren't super impressive assists. It's not as though John Leonard dominated while he was on the ice, and so it was a good sign for what would come in the rest of the season that wasn't necessarily the case but it was nice to see him get those two points however after those two points he kind of fell off a bit and after a few more games of being with Evander Kane and Tomas Hurdle on that second line he would eventually get demoted down to the bottom six and he would get a couple more tries in the top six at times getting up there with Timo Meyer or even Logan Couture but he would mostly play the rest of the season in that bottom six anyway now when it came to John Leonard's game there were a few good parts of it I felt that he had some very good speed in his game and his skill certainly wasn't too bad but the main issue that I found John Leonard had with his game was his shot his shot was just kind of mediocre which actually goes to support a stat that I had for him which is the fact that his expected goals was about three less than what you would expect he could have had double the amount of goals he had this season if you know he had a bit more luck and also if he had a bit of a better shot it was something that I talked about with Ryan Donato in a previous video as well in his review where Ryan Donato was about four less goals than expected John Leonard was about three less goals than expected which was third place or you know third place on the Sharks for goals less than expected and while I said it was for being snake bitten when it came to Ryan Donato, because I felt as though Donato had a pretty good shot with John Leonard, there might be a bit of snake bitten with it. But also, as I said, his shot just wasn't necessarily that great. So his speed and skill were putting him into positions where he would normally be able to score, you know, high danger opportunities where on average, you'd be able to score more goals than in the lower danger opportunities. However, he was taking shots that made it so that these high danger opportunities were still relatively easy saves for a lot of opposing goaltenders. So it kind of reminds me of Timo Meyer when he first came into the NHL. Meyer was able to use his speed, his size, his skill to get into decent positions to be able to score, but he would also end up taking a lot of low percentage shots. And this was something that you know the team talked about when they were talking about Timo Meyer which was that a lot of the time the play would kind of die on his stick because he would get the, the 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 puck in areas where you probably wouldn't want to shoot and yet he'd take a shot and it wouldn't be that great of a shot and it would be an easy save and an easy whistle for the opposing team's goaltender. But Meyer, after a couple of years, he was able to improve that and eventually become the 30-goal scorer that he did in the 18-19 season. Will John Leonard become a 30-goal scorer? You know, it's kind of unlikely I would say but you know a 10 15 maybe even 20 goal scorer could potentially be in the cards for John Leonard if there is some notable improvement that goes on over these next couple of years the thing is with John Leonard is that my expectations this season coming in were that he would be able to retain a relatively constant spot in the Sharks lineup this season and that's essentially exactly what he did as we move on to the games played for him 44 games played obviously a few healthy scratches here or there and I believe he was injured for a brief brief time as well we will be rating his stats over a full 82 game season so goals three goals on the year which would be six over a full season 10 assists which would be 19 over a full season and 13 points which would be 25 over a full season which is about in line with what you would expect from a I would say a pretty good fourth line player which based on the ice time which I will get to a bit later that's exactly where John Leonard was kind of used in those situations as we move on to his penalty minutes this is an interesting one as this was the lowest penalty minutes on the San Jose Sharks and not just because he didn't play a ton of ice time so he wasn't given a ton of opportunities to take penalties but actually if you also count in the fact of how many games he played as well as the fact of 
uh, based on his time on ice. He still is the lowest on the Sharks in penalty minutes per game, as well as percentage of time on ice that are penalty minutes. So it goes to show that at the very least, in the brief time that he was on the ice, he was staying out of the penalty box, which I guess is, you know, a good thing. The thing is, is though, it could also be showing that he wasn't necessarily super engaged with the game, as uh, when you take a look at net penalties, uh, when we go penalties drawn minus penalties taken, he was actually only a plus one because at, when you take his one penalty taken, he only had two penalties drawn, so it kind of evens out a bit there. So while it's not negative, which is a good thing, and two penalty minutes is never going to be a bad thing necessarily, it does go to show that maybe Leonard wasn't having a super high impact on the game in the offensive or defensive zone. And as we move on to the time on ice, this is where it kind of is a bit awkward for John Leonard because if you take a look at Sharks players who played at the very least 20 games this season, John Leonard was the lowest time on ice out of everybody. This is below players like Matt Nieto, Patrick Marlowe, Marcus Sorensen, Noah Gregor, and it is a bit disappointing in that regard. John Leonard was a player who was relatively hyped up during the uh, training camp and such like that, so I would have liked to see him get a bit of a better opportunity. I'm not expecting 15, 16, 17 minutes a night, but at the very least somewhere in the 12, 12 and a half, kind of what, you know, I was disappointed that Ryan Donato was only given 12 and a half minutes per game. And I thought Donato could have done with a couple more minutes of ice time. I think John Leonard should have been where Ryan Donato was with about 12 and a half minutes per game, which would have given him a bit of a better opportunity to show what he was actually capable of offensively. Because at 11 and a half, uh, 11 minutes and 15 seconds, this is kind of inflated by those games that, the, you know, the few games that the Sharks would have through the season where they were maybe heavily in the lead or heavily behind, and so Leonard would be given a few more shifts. But in games that were relatively close, and games that were within a goal or just tied in general, Leonard would at times be given, you know, three and three minutes, maybe three and a half minutes in the first period. And then for the rest of the game, four or five more shifts to amount to like seven or eight minutes in the entire game, which is just kind of disappointing. I know Bob Booner likes to be very tough on his rookies and they need to show that they can play the right way. But but the fact is, is that at least at this moment, prior to this upcoming entry draft, the Sharks do not have a lot of forward prospects. And so when you take a player like John Leonard and you consistent, you know, one of the top forward prospects that the Sharks have at the t at this moment, when you take him and you just give him fourth line minutes playing with players like Curtis Gabriel at times and getting seven or eight minutes a night, I'm not sure what you can actually expect from him. John Leonard is not the player who's going to be able to drive a line with Curtis Gabriel and Patrick Marlowe on, you know, uh, on his line so it just seems kind of a weird situation where why not just play him in the AHL as a top line player if you're just going to give him very little opportunity in the NHL but that's just my opinion as we move on to his grade as I said my expectations for John Leonard were that he would be able to maintain a relatively consistent spot at the NHL level and that's exactly what he did and the fact that he actually managed to be on pace for about 25 points over a full year is just a bit of icing on the cake which is why while it's not a super high grade or anything like that he did have a pretty decent year for himself and as such I'm giving him the grade of a C plus class dismissed